I've seen very few people talk about this. Actually, I've seen nobody talk about this. There was this woman on Dr. Phil about a year ago claiming that she was Annie from Michael Jackson's Smooth Criminal. This woman is delusional, but I wanted to make a video response because I want to give my input into her mentality as opposed to just like laughing about her. Anyway, so the video it, the video is in like clips. The full episode is like an hour, but I'm only going to be replying to like the important clips of the episode. So let's start off with this woman's insane, insane story. Oh look, fuck you. I believe I am Annie from Michael Jackson's song, Swin's Criminal. My this woman is serious, by the way. She actually believes this. Michael mentions my name 46 times in his song. <laughs> yeah, because nobody else shares the name Annie, which is like one of the most popular female names. At the time Michael Jackson wrote the song Smooth Criminal, I was in an abusive relationship on the night. And he somehow knows that. By the way, you, actually I'll go to, I'll go to when you when you say it. I was being abused. I became Annie from Smooth Criminal. So in your mind you did, and maybe you took it as like some kind of comfort to know that somebody sang a song about it. And if you did it only for comfort, I actually wouldn't be too bothered by it except for the fact that you're mentally unstable. But it's what you're asking for. If you ran into the bedroom, she was struck down, it was her dome. Oh my god. No woman or man being abused has ever run into their bedroom. I mean, that's just so uncommon. He definitely wrote about specifically about your situation. And I did. I ran into the bedroom. <laughs> I ran into the bedroom. That never happens. And I was struck down. This I was struck down. So basically any form of physical abuse, physical contact. Because no woman or man has ever been hit, punched, smacked, slapped. No, okay, just you. Paragraph really speaks to me because it brings back... It's like it just happened yesterday. This would speak to anybody who's been abused. A lot of Michael's music in general is very worldwide. It applies to many people. You, you look, think about They Don't Care About Us. He's talking about all the kind of abuse and police violence, which happens all over the world. Look at Man in the Mirror. It's a fucking symbolic song about how all people should look within themselves. All people. Almost all of his songs are like that, about inner things that apply to everyone in the world, and that includes abuse, sexual abuse, that includes police brutality, injustice in the world, criminals. Everything he sings he, he sings about is a worldwide thing. All this was happening, I saw a limousine outside the window. I believe... You probably imagined it, and even if it was there, there are many limos in the world, and it was probably just parked there because I don't know where you live, and maybe you live on a street where limos drive by once in a while. I've even seen a limo, and I live in a fucking suburban town. I've seen a limo before. Limos are not that uncommon. You have no proof that it was his. And even if, and how would it even be his? What, you think he was just sitting at your house doing what? what? What purpose would he have there? Even if he did write the song about you, what was he doing? He was sitting there observing the abuse. What was he looking in your window? He can't see it from the driveway anyway. Could have been Michael Jackson in that limousine. I know that Michael Jackson had family that lived in the area. Any okay, so Michael had family lived in the, in the area. Well, his parents live in California, um, the rich area, obviously, Beverly Hills. So basically what you're saying is you live around that area. So chances are, yes, you live in a rich neighborhood and therefore seeing limos is not a rare thing. Are you okay? Why do you think he said that? Annie, are you okay? Why do you think he said that? <laughs> well, if we go into the real reason that the, that the name Annie's in the song, Annie is the name of a CPR dummy. It's the common name. The male one is usually John. I don't know if that's in every country, but anyway. I guess the female C CPR dummies are usually named Annie. And when you're taking a CPR course, they have you say, insert name here, are you okay? Now, I don't know why Michael used this stupid CPR dummy in the song. Michael did a lot of weird things like that. But the point is, the whole reason this exists is because of the CPR dummy. He liked the dummy for some weird ass reason, and then to put it in the song. And the lyrics, are you okay, is what you say to the fucking dummy. And besides, if it was about you, would he be asking if you're okay? Wouldn't he know just from spying on you, apparently, or being a peeping, peeping Tom in your window? And also, I think it's funny it's called a CPR dummy, and yet you are a fucking dummy. Because he wanted to know if I was okay. Why? Shocking. Well, Michael Jackson put so much emphasis on my name if he didn't want me to figure it out. There are so many people named Annie! I called Quincy Jones twice. I talked to some lady. I told her that I'm Annie. I'm the girl in the song. And then I heard someone in the background say, hang up the phone. 
Okay, are you conspiring that they told you that they told her to hang up on hang up the phone on you because they didn't want the big secret to get out? No, they hung up the phone because they know that you're batshit insane, like probably most of the fanatics who call them up demanding money or royalties. Or asking if Mike was alive still. There is a lot of friction between me and my daughters. They like, don't believe that I am Annie. Well, your daughters are intelligent, and I feel very fucking bad for them. And you will too when you see his daughter, her, her daughter talking. Right now I'm homeless. I hang out a lot at this donut shop. <laughs> I'm homeless and I hang out at a donut shop. That That's only the first look into many into this woman's psychological issues. How it feels to be homeless? It's not a good feeling. Then get a fucking job. You don't even look homeless. You're calling yourself homeless, but you're dressed in a fucking, like, dress pants and like almost looks like a blazer you're wearing and you're fucking homeless? Get a job! I've been stolen from all my life. Even my life story from Smith Criminal was stolen from me and I didn't get anything. I want the rest of my song. I am him. No, you're not. Okay, it's good to meet you. Glad to meet you. Um, so, how do you know that you're in it? My grandmother Because my name is Annie, that makes me automatically right. Hey, you know Michael Jackson had a song called Superfly Sister where he says the name Susie? Did you know that he also had a song called Little Susie? Oh my god, not only does he say Susie, but he has two songs that use the name Susie. That must mean that any Susie in the world has demanded royalties. Oh wait, I'm sorry, it's three actually. Little Susie, Superfly Sister, and Blood of the Dance Floor. All three of those songs involve the name Susie. I guess we need to give them royalties. Oh wait, Dirty Diana. One of my best friends, he's engaged to a girl named Diana. I guess she needs royalties. That name. And um, I was violently abused. Many people were, I feel bad for you, but many people were abused, so suck it up. Also, homeless my ass. Look at this nice shirt you're wearing, you're homeless. You look at this fucking chain and everything. Around the time that that song came out. Around the song, the, 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 around the time that the song came out. Now, there is what I wanted to reply to. One of the key aspects of this. So, <laughs> the song came out around when you were being abused, which means that he found out you were being abused, went home, wrote the song, sang the song, recorded it, finished the rest of the album, and released it in time for you to hear the song all in this small span that, the, that your abuse took place. Don't you find that kind of weird? He, the song was released around when you were being abused, but you wrote it like the year before. Your time's a little bit wrong. I'm very sorry about that, by the way, that you had to live through that. Now, tell me about the limo. By the way, Al Capone, is the demo song of Smooth Criminal, which doesn't have the name Annie in it at all. And before this bitch starts saying, yeah, that's why it was changed to fit more of me. The point is the song's idea was already made, which means you had no inputs into how it was being made. Because this was a key for you. I saw his, uh, I started doing some digging and the particular limo that I saw outside is the same one that he has in storage. That's pretty hilarious, because first of all, Michael actually had a lot of cars, including Rolls Royces, which are regular cars, not limos. And also, here's a little, here's a key thing, Michael barely rode around in limos. He usually used those black SUVs, so you also just destroyed your story. He has several cars. He has several cars, so basically, if you see any of his 20 cars, they're all him. That looks very similar, too. Very similar. Key word, very similar. It's not exact, it's not the same car, it looks similar. So as long as it looks similar, that's enough. It doesn't have to actually be the same car, I mean, God forbid. It just has to look like it. Okay. There's thousands of limousines. I'm sorry? There's thousands, hundreds of thousands of limousines. How? She's right. There's, there's one thing that you don't remember, and that's because you were just a little child. First of all, you, there's nothing that you can say that you even remember about any of that when all of this happened. So my... A little child? Oh, this is recent, okay. Jackson was just... I don't know if Michael Phoenix. Jackson was in Phoenix, or... In Phoenix? 
Wait a minute, okay, now you've just gone backwards. Where's the rich people area? Uh, if there was someone who was living in the complex, maybe who knew or heard about what had happened. But you think you looked out the apartment window and yes. saw him in the limousine down to curb? I saw the limo. I don't know if I saw him in the limo, but I did see the limo. Most likely not, because even if he was, most limos have tinted windows. But before we move on, let's take a, let's take a look at the lyrics and see which ones follow, because knowing your mentality, you most likely pick and choose the lyrics that fit your situation. So let's, let's take a look. Did he come into the window? You didn't say that. Uh, was it the sound of a crescendo? You didn't say that. Uh, okay, she does have an apartment. She did mention bloodstains. She did mention the table. Uh, ran into the bedroom, she said that, and then struck down said that, but all very common. Came into the outway. I'm not sure if that means like an alleyway, like an alleyway between a building or something. Um, in which case, no, because it's happening in your apartment, so no. Uh, was it Sunday? You didn't say if it was Sunday. Or a black day. I guess you mean nighttime or something. And those are the lyrics. Alright. Anyway, there is one more verse, but most people don't count it. Alright, let's go to this next video. My mom, Annie, is delusional. She act Now we're getting uh, the daughter's point of view, so we're going to hear some common sense for a minute. She truly believes Michael Jackson wrote the song Smooth Criminal about her. My mom says 30 years ago that she was abused. She swears somehow Michael Jackson knew this was happening to her. My mom claims that all of it happened like the lyrics state. The blood on the carpet, hiding under the table, even escaping to the bedroom. That's only three lines. There's at least like eight. My mom has even called Quincy Jones because she believes she's owed the rights to the song. <laughs> By the way, this is just like Michael's accusers. They make some bullshit up and say, oh, I'm owed money. But I mean, this is why she's homeless, because she doesn't want to work. It's about not wanting to work and wanting money in spot of that. Absolutely no way my mom is Annie. Growing up, my mom had erratic behavior. She accused maintenance of stealing her undergarments. There we have a better look into her, into her psyche. She's obviously heavily paranoid, bipolar, and I think schizophrenic. She believed our little sister's dad is six different people. Six different people. So now we're even going into multiple personality disorder. He had a secret tunnel and would come out as different people. A secret tunnel, back to the paranoia, and just insane. She would go to thrift stores and buy paintings and later state that they were worth millions of dollars. Pathological liar. A year ago, my mom lost her apartment. She is now homeless and living on the street with my 14-year-old little sister. In the last two months, they... Well, that's not, well, that's not very smart. If you really wanted to prove that <laughs> the song was about you, you should have found a way to keep the apartment because maybe it would have acted as evidence. But I guess that wasn't, that was too logical for you. Okay. Lived in a donut shop, storage facility. Lived in a donut shop? I thought you just stayed there a lot. She lived in it. <laughs> wow. A public library. My little sister does digital graphics and does make a few dollars. So my mom makes our little sister pay for hotel rooms every day. I worry about them. My mother used to be a model and now she's homeless. My mom does not work because she believes she's entitled to the right. There you go. She just she's trying to siphon money. Rights of smooth criminal. I am livid. I want my mother to stop trying to cash in on the rights to this song and get a job and support her and my little sister. Oh my god. Okay. Now you're concerned about the you. audience is like, whoa. There's a 14-year-old child here, right? There is. What's going on with her and school and all of that? Our little sister's not in school. Um, she should be a freshman this year in high school and hasn't been in school since fourth grade. How does that happen? What do you mean she hasn't been in school since fourth grade? My mom claims she's homeschooled, but... <laughs> homeschooled? Yeah, let me give you a lesson on how to be delusional and just take money from people because I don't want to work. I don't see curriculum. I don't, I don't believe that. Does this come out of the blue? Well, so she's lying to you again, and we've already established she's a, that she's a pathological liar, among many other problems. Your mother, I mean, well, I, I wouldn't say out of the blue. Give it Dr. Phil's speechless. Um, it's been years, and 
Does she thing. have other things that are atypical? That I would she... say a lot of delusions. Like? Um, she believes she knows Vin Diesel, The Rock. She believes she knows Vin Diesel. So there you go. We also have past, we even have past evidence of other things involving celebrities, not just the painting stuff and all that, but we even have past celebrities, which only helps prove that she's insane. She believes, the obviously, the song was written about her. She talks about seeing stars randomly, and I don't believe it. She says she knows Ben Diesel. Seeing stars like Tweety Bird when she smacks her head. Diesel and The Rock. The Rock. Dwight Johnson. So, mm -hmm. does she hang out with them? Absolutely not. I mean, she hasn't I come by your house with them or anything? No. So, do you... Uh, he hasn't even met her yet in this clip, and he's, he's, he's already mocking her. Reality test her on these things? Do you say, well, let's call him up. Let's meet him for lunch. Let's... I don't, honestly, because it's been something I've heard since I was a kid, so... So she's been doing this, I mean, she's got to be at least, like, what, 26? So she's been doing this for her whole life. I'm kind of tired of it. So how long has she had this belief that she's Annie in the song? As long as I can remember, I've heard it really? since I was a teenager. Really? So this is something she's hung on to for a long time? Yes, Dr. Fell. And is she casually convinced of this, or is this at the core of her belief system? This is at the core of her belief system. Okay, wait. If this has been going on, if you've had this belief since 1987, then why are you only going public about it now? Oh, because Michael died. Okay, I got it now. She's called Quincy Jones. She has. She's reached out, emails, phone calls. She's very open with us about that. Hasn't received any correspondence back. No nope. Shocking. Surprise there. Right. <laughs> does she do this from her job? Does she... She does not work. She doesn't have a job. She does not. And, and she doesn't have a job because she's going to cash in on oh this. God. I'm no expert, but I feel like she's entitled. She feels entitled. Um, her and my little sister are actually living on the streets. They have no place to live, and she refuses to work. <gasps> this woman! I'm asking if you see a logic trail that explains that... The You're asking her if she sees logic? Well, that's already a bad question. As long as about you, or... If maybe you think that's a, a a leap of logic, a stretch. A stretch? It's more than a stretch, Phil. And Akia says that this doesn't happen in isolation. She says that you also believe that neighbors have spied on you through holes in the ceiling. How much more evidence do we need that this woman's fucked out of her mind? Neighbors spy on her through the holes in her ceiling. She's completely out of it. Do you believe that? Maybe not spied on me, but I know that... Oh, are you changing your word now because Phil's calling you up for saying that? I've had a lot of problems in my life, and... I can see many problems. What'd you say, though? I mean, since we were small, holes in the wall, you cover with tape, or you... Well, there's always a hole. I mean, there, I've had some really hard times. I don't think you were just abused by your ex-husband. I think you were like molested about 50 billion times. Nobody could be this fucked up. I mean, I've never seen paranoia this bad. I mean that, that there's cameras, that people are watching. Maybe they have, I don't know. I'm just asking, have you said that? I don't think I have said that, but if I have- That's called lying. That was a long time ago. The thrift store, what? Painting worth what? Well, the, the, oh. that you've purchased paintings at a thrift store Robert Woods and painting. said that they were worth millions. It, I didn't say worth millions. I said that they were worth, I, I, not worth millions. I, One thing to note, very important here, every time she says something, when the daughter calls her out going, well, yes, you did, or something like that, watch how defensive the mother gets. To me, they mean, to me, they're worth millions. That's not what you said. Have you said... That your ex That's called backtracking now. <sighs> husband had a secret tunnel in the bedroom and came out as six different people. No. And who was the ex-husband? No. 
Who was the ex? Your ex-husband, the one who abused you. If you said anybody is coming out of a secret tunnel in your bedroom, no. there's six different people. No. That is a lie. That is not a lie. Whoa, you see that? Did you fucking see that? Whoa. A lie. That is not a lie. That is an abusive mother. That is a paranoid mother. That is some fucking psychopath right there. Stay, no, stay with me here. Okay. Stay with me. Don't hit your daughter like your husband hit you. Now, Akia... Maintenance worker stole... No, no, no. We're not talking about oh maintenance God. worker stealing the underwear yet. We're talking about somebody coming out of his <laughs> secret tunnel in your bedroom yeah. as six different people. I didn't see a six different people. My, uh, He would have different people come into the household all the time. Now, who, you know... Exactly. Okay, you're fucking schizophrenic. You are schizophrenic. I'm sorry. I mean, I wasn't there to see who came in and who. He had a. Who built a tunnel? I, I didn't say there was a tunnel. Okay, so your daughter is is lying. Oh please, she's the one lying. My God. I don't. I don't think she's lying, but I don't know. Well, that's a pretty random thing to make up. Well, that's because she's the one making it up, and she's a pathological liar, and pathological liars are psychologically proven to just make things up randomly, so, you know. You swore up and down that he would go in his room and come out, and you would even show us photos and be like, this feature is different, that's not him. The girl is so well collected, I believe every word this girl is saying. Yeah, because it wasn't, because it was those other people, and I just found out about that. Did you or did you not tell you? Wait, what? Did you just? Because it was those other people and I just found out about that. What do you mean you just found out about? Apparently you made this clean years ago and it was ongoing from the ex-husband. And if you just found out and he's your ex-husband, then when the fuck did it happen? Did you or did you not tell your daughter this? The audience is laughing. I did not. Dude, why would she be saying this? Why would she say that she doesn't believe that I'm Annie? Why would she say she's so defensive? It's so clear. It's criminal because she doesn't realize that I am. We're <laughs> <Hey>, yelling. <laughs> talking about whether or not you have told your children that there At is the time, a secret passage into no, your bedroom. No, I did not. And that someone is coming out of it with six different people. He came out with different people. That I do know. But the secret tunnel, I might have thought that. But Didn't a second ago you just say it didn't happen and now you're saying it did? No, that's not true. Okay. Because there was no that's secret tunnel. Listen, I, you might have thought it was the time and don't mail. That's, that's all I wanted. Because I wanted to know how was it that all these different people, well, he didn't have a screen on his window and he was letting people in and out. Okay. My, I, have a, a, I have proof of that as well. That's all I want to know. I just... Well, schizophrenia does show you people and demons. I want to know what it is you're entertaining in your mind. and. In your mind, exactly. You see, Phil's like, Phil knows she's insane, but he's just kind of like asking her casually, like, so why are you fucking insane? And some of it may be accurate, some of it may not. No. None of it's accurate. Some of it is not accurate, but oh. now that I know what the truth is... Be well, so you admit that some of it's not accurate. Because it took a little while for me to put everything together. Yeah, and I'll, I'll help you sort all of this out, but I... I don't want you to be defensive about it. I don't want you to tell me at one time I believed that I don't now. Right. Maybe I did and I don't or whatever. But, you know, did you believe at one time that your bedroom was being infiltrated and that someone was coming out as different people? I don't know about infiltrated, but I do know that I saw different people and... That's infiltrated. It wasn't infiltrated, but, but people walked in. So they infiltrated it. Now I know. Okay, so fundamentally, what she's saying you reported is What's true. true. Okay, so you confirm that one. Yes. Okay, maintenance worker stealing your underwear. And that wasn't a maintenance worker I found. She's probably seen like an image from back in her modeling days or something. What did it happen to do with, and I don't want to mention the person's name. Okay. And they were stealing. Why would you want to mention the name? You might be telling the truth for us for a second. Your underwear. Um. They were, they were coming in the apartment, yes, because they had a key. Oh, so now somebody has a key to your <laughs> a key to your apartment. Oh, my God. Sound and audio engineer, Matt Forger. 
worked closely with the King of Pop on several projects, including... He's one of Michael's sound engineers. I wish he got Brad Sundberg in there. Brad would have been like, listen, bitch, I was there when he made Smooth Criminal. His multi-platinum album, Band. Now, he says Michael told him who Annie was when they worked together on the recording of Smooth Criminal. Mm -hmm. So, Matt, welcome. Thank you for being here. <laughs> Note what he's talking about. First of all, he looks at her like she's fucking batshit insane. But also, he's going to explain the CPR dummy now. And when he's explaining it, look at the woman's face and how she's like, Oh, how dare you say it's about a dummy and not me. I would, uh, he's laughing already. I would say you've had a very uh, interesting career, wouldn't you? Absolutely. Yeah, you've had the privilege of... Uh, working with some, some great folks that have done some great work, and you worked with Michael on this album. Why did you ask about Danny? Well, when we were in the studio working, I noticed there was a, a green fiberglass case in the corner. So one day I asked him why it was there, and he said, oh, that's Annie, because when they teach CPR... She's looking at him like... They... Uh, have you address the CPR mannequin? And he said, uh, that's where the name Annie comes from. Because what you're instructed to do is you're instructed to ask the mannequin, Annie, are you okay? Which is where the line in the song and the character originated. So that's the actual line in the song, Annie, are you okay? That's what you're instructed to ask the mannequin that you're doing the CPR on. Correct. Is there any doubt in your mind that her experiences are coincidental? I would say that must be the case. Then why? <laughs> yeah, they are. <laughs> no second thought there. Would that song, Annie, Are You Okay, be? The song is not called Annie, Are You Okay? <laughs> Added with. She was struck down all the things that happened to me. They're not exclusive to you. These are regular abuse things. When a woman or a man is abused, they get struck. Blood could spill. They hide under the table or the bedroom. Why is this, like, foreign to you? Well, because it was, it was an attack. And she's looking at him like, that's a good question. Answer it. Attack upon a person. It was a real attack. It's a tie-out. It's, it's a regular attack upon a person. Attack upon a person. You, d you do agree with that? Well, yeah. It's an attack upon a person. I love how, too, by the way, when she's asking him right here to verify that, yes, it's so you agree that it's an attack upon a person. Not you, but any person. It's almost like she wants verification that we believe she was abused. Which only proves more her psychological issue is not tied towards her thinking that she's Annie from the song, but more that I was abused and I want people to believe me that it really happened and I don't deserve to be abused. We, do, we believe you and we don't think you deserve to be abused, but we do think you're insane and you're wrong about the song. But you can see, you can see, you can see the psychological thing here. And just, just look at that clip again, too. Person, you do, you do agree with that? You do, you do agree. She needs that verification about the abuse, not the song. I agree that was what the subject of the song was. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> so, he flat out tells you you're wrong, and you thank him. Again, further proving that you're just still hurt about the abuse, not the song. You just wanted verification that, yes, you're abused. We, we, we understand that. Yeah. Look at them all laughing. He's looking at her, and look at his face! <laughs> songs that people relate to. That's right. There's a line in the song that says mouth... Exactly. We, we, we make songs that people can relate to. And most of Michael's songs were relatable, as I mentioned earlier. Man in the Mirror, Smooth Criminal. The majority of his music goes like that. Billy, even Billie Jean is about, you know, a groupie. All this kind of... Dirty Dan is about a groupie. Fucking... Almost all of his music has some kind of jam, even has some religious uh, references. I mean, a ton of his music has that. The mouth resuscitation. That's right. I was knocked completely out. I was knocked out and I needed mouth to mouth. Nobody's ever needed mouth to mouth before. I'm the first person. 
exactly around the same time that he wrote this song. Look at the, <laughs> look at the fucking audience laughing. Also, I had mouth to mouth around the time the song was taken. No, 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 no. You had it around when the song was released, but it was written and recorded almost a year before. Wrote this song. This is what you're saying. No, but I, as you said, I... <laughs> No, he's not saying that. What you're saying that I'm not uh, that that the time that any CPR dummy that name came out. How long ago? How long ago did any CPR dummy? Do you know how long ago that was? This film was released on the bad. 1987. That's exactly when that happened to me, sir. Thank you. (laughs) Okay, I'm fucking done. This woman's insane. She needs some serious psychiatric help. That's. And that's all. Mother of God.